What's up, everybody? You're listening to episode 36 of... <gasps> Just Breathing with Laud and Lungs. Welcome back to another episode. Um, man, 36 episodes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We keep going up and up and up and up and up. Still not at 100. 100, <laughs> like, when you look at other people that do podcasts, and they're, like, at episode 600 i'm like my yeah goodness yeah that is so many podcasts well it seems like a lot well it is a lot but we since we've been doing it we realize that it really is a lot yeah well and, and that's the thing like if unless you're in it you don't understand what it means like like joe rogan talking for three hours and he's at episode like 1600. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, think uh, about that for a second. Yeah. 1600 times three. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? That's how many hours he's talked with people. Right. Like, that's amazing. That is pretty Now amazing. he's been, he's been in it since like 2007. Yeah. Something like that. So he's been doing it a long time. Right. He's been doing it a long time. And we've been doing it a year. Mm -hmm. A little over a year now. A year and a month. Right. So 36 is good. It's pretty good. I'm good with 36. But uh, yeah, welcome back everybody to another episode. Um, a lot of stuff going on in the world. A lot of stuff going on. And I, I, I always want this podcast to be a place where... We talk about those things. Mm -hmm. um, I see some podcasts try to avoid certain things going on in the world, and I lose respect for that. Yeah. You know, I, I'm i not saying those people need to virtue signal. I'm not saying those people need to give their opinions. I'm not, you do your thing, mm -hmm. but especially when the shows are sort of designed in a way to talk about current events. Oh, and then they don't. And then they sort of avoid certain current events. Yeah. And you're like, bro, this is like the only topic right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. There are times in history where like, like 9-11, people weren't like, so what show did you see last right. night? Right. No. We're going to talk about this event. <sighs> yeah. Because that's the only thing to talk about. Right. And I I feel like tonight I, I want to talk about Afghanistan, mm. if that's okay with you. That's fine with me. I mean, we it's are sad. too novices when it comes to this subject, but I think it's good to have a conversation about it because mm -hmm. I don't want to shy away from, from things like this. And I think, I think we can bring some perspective to an issue that has a lot of confusion, mm -hmm. um, coupled with it. It's not, it's nothing's clear cut in war in general. Um, it's definitely not clear cut in this situation. Yeah. This situation's this situation is different. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a long time before sort of the chips are all laid out, and we kind of can see clearly what happened, mm. why it happened, what went wrong, when it went wrong. Right. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know right now. Yeah. And I just thought it'd be interesting to talk about what. I, we're we're both of the age where like. This war has been going on for like a good portion of our lives. Is it has it been 20 years? Is that what it's I It's been heard? over 20 years. Oh wow. So we, you know, started our war on terror. I'm trying to think of how long it was bef like after 9/11 that we invaded Afghanistan. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember all the dates. It was I can't shortly remember. after yeah. 9-11 that we invaded Afghanistan because they were harboring Al Qaeda. Okay. So we weren't going after right now in the news it's all Taliban. Mm -hmm. And that's the faction that's taking over, you know, many regions within Afghanistan. But like we went in because they were harboring Al Qaeda. Okay. And Al Qaeda is not there anymore. Al Qaeda, and they might be coming back in now, but like, is Al Qaeda and the Taliban like? This is probably a stupid question. Are they? I know. I know they're different, but like, are they connected at all? 
Like they they seem like the same, like they do the same stuff to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I'm like, are they somehow in like connection? I'm sure I don't, I don't that know. there are connections between all terrorist organizations. Yeah, um, they all kind of overlap at some level, at some place. And are they all? They're all Islamic too, right? Those factions, like yeah, the extreme, yeah, extreme. Taliban, Al Qaeda. Those are Islamic factions that are terrorist organizations, but like. Al Qaeda was the one that Osama bin Laden was a part of. Yeah, yeah. Um, and kind of heading up. So that was the reason originally that we went into Afghanistan. And I was 11 years old. Yeah. When 9 11 happened. Like, and I'm 31 now. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. I was 11 years old and now I am 31 years old. That's crazy. <laughs> And, like, we are just now getting out of the country that we invaded. Yeah. When I was 11 years old. Right. Wow. So what are what is your, like, because I know you've kind of changed over the years, but what's your opinion of that whole thing? Like, going in and coming out, like, all of it. Yeah. Yeah, my opinion definitely has changed. I think when I was 11, I just, like most kids, you just kind of— Accept whatever your parents tell you. Mm -hmm. Accept whatever um, the party of your parents, the yeah. political party of your parents tell you. And at that time, George Bush was saying that we needed to do this. Right. Um, I, I remember that. And, and America was pissed. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were pissed. I, I, like, I, I attended one of the funerals of the pilot that ran into yeah. the World Trade Center. Like, at 11 years old, that's heavy. Yeah. Like, I hung out with his kids, mm -hmm. like, before the funeral and, and went to that funeral, and it just, it was heavy. Yeah. It was heavy. I, I still remember it. Like, that's how I remember, like, the prayer meetings that we had, like, afterwards, and just how the church was, like, overflowing with people praying after mm -hmm. that, and, like, I remember all of that vividly. Yeah. I remember sitting at my house because I was homeschooled at the time, watching the TV all day. Yeah. Um, I remember the second plane hitting. Yeah. You know, I remember my dad calling when the first plane hit because he heard it on the radio. Yeah. Um, we were angry. America was angry. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't... I don't think that a war in Afghanistan could have been stopped. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean if you take all of those emotions out of it, that it was the right choice. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to. Wasn't the fall. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be interrupting you. No, but like, no, no. Wasn't ahead. the because I definitely I remember that time when I was a kid, but I don't I don't remember as much as you just explained. But like. Wasn't the whole thought process like we have to kind of, yeah, we were angry, but also like we have to show them we're not weak. Like we don't accept that. Wasn't that like one of the main things too? I'm sure that's an aspect of it. I think that's always an aspect of war. Yeah. I mean. Like don't do this to, to not, us again. Yeah, and we'll show you why. too off topic because I'll, I'll finish up. I'll come back to that that first question. But like right now. We look weak. Yeah, well. The chaos that ensued and our inability to get everybody out, there's still, we really don't know, like the lowest estimate of people that, Americans that are still in Afghanistan. It's is a like, lot. It's like 10,000. Yeah. Two projections of like 40,000. And that's just Americans, right? And that's just Americans. That's not all we're the not people even that helped. Yeah, we're not talking America. about. Yeah. I, I think in the interview that Biden did recently um, with Stephanopoulos, I won't get into that whole thing, but um, I think he said there's like, at least they're making, they're making provisions to try and get like, there's like 65,000 Afghans that have aided the United States that are trying to get out right now. Yeah. 
Sixty-five thousand. They should have done. They should have done the evacuation before they pulled out. But sorry, you finish what you were originally yeah. saying. So, so, anyways, just my opinions on the original invasion that kind of started the war on terror with Afghanistan being the first country that we invaded. I don't think. I think it was inevitable. After you, you kill over three thousand people. In 9-11, I think it was inevitable that we were going to enter into a war to capture or kill Osama bin Laden. Yeah. And this is where stuff starts falling apart, is we lost our focus. Mm-hmm. Um, our focus was to capture or kill Osama bin Laden. And we declared war because the country— that we invaded was harboring, which means they were providing aid Mm -hmm. militarily and financially to the terrorist organization that we needed to infiltrate in order to get Osama bin Laden. So militarily, I understand Mm -hmm. what we were doing there, why we were doing it. Um, But like I said, we lost our focus. Yeah. Then it became about a lot of other things. And those other things are still coming out. Mm. Those other things have been coming out and have been kind of suppressed. Yeah. Um, world building efforts. Uh, you could you could be really nefarious and look at the amount of opium exports that have been coming out of Afghanistan. Yikes. And we have a, you know, an opiate pa- pandemic, if you want to call it a pandemic. I mean, it kills more people than covid Mm -hmm. so we have an opiate pandemic happening in the united states at the same time that afghan in which what was a country that we were propping up yeah was exporting massive amounts of opiums you're like yeah it's hard not to be conspiratorial yeah be a little think nefarious thoughts yeah and say huh and you could even go further with that not to get too off topic into the weeds of conspiracy theories but like Isn't it amazing that now that pharmaceutical companies are making a lot of money on vaccines, we pull out of pull out of Afghanistan? Mm. That's that's weird, right? Yeah, seems weird. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, we're good here, so we don't need this right opium anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's some there's some shady stuff and I think it's only going to come out in tidbits over the next few years if ever. If ever. I mean it's it's taken a while for us to really see some of the it, it took a while for a lot of the stuff surrounding Iraq mm-hmm. to come out. It it it's taken a while for the stuff surrounding ISIS. Yeah. And kind of our our um, mistakes that sort of led to the rise of ISIS. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just there's just a lot of mistakes that have happened over since the time that we invaded Afghanistan till now. Yeah, we've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, we've kind of we we've let our guard down. We've sort of relinquished our push to do whatever we had decided to do. I'm not saying those decisions were even good. Mm-hmm. You know, but when you decide to do something, you need to finish it. Yeah. And in Afghanistan, we decided to world build. We decided to bring infrastructure. We decided to bring education. We decided to bring gender equality. We decided mm-hmm. to bring all of these Western ideals to a place that didn't really want them. That I wouldn't say that's true. Well, <laughs> to a place where the majority— <laughs> To the chaotic people didn't want them. Yes. But the chaotic people rule this country. Well, I guess that that's where, so like, I definitely am a novice. I don't know. All, all I know is the tiny bit that I hear yeah. from from the, the news outlets that I have. But, uh, I mean, I think losing our fo- focus in Afghanistan is definitely a big problem. I know I didn't really know. Like, you kind of remember that you're in there, you know, after 9-11 and then, after Osama bin Laden was like killed, then you're just like, you forget about it. 
You're like, oh, well, that's done now. Well, even that was 11 years after the fact. Right, but like, I still, How amazing is that, yeah. that he survived for 11 years? But I remember when it happened. Like, I don't remember where I was or anything, but I remember hearing that and being like, oh, wow, like, yeah, it happened. But, um... And that was a strange thing, too. That was a strange thing, too. Like, just the fact that that it took 11 years for them to kill Osama bin Laden. I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, just I mean, I can believe that he was in hiding like he's a scary person with a lot of control. Like you don't refuse whatever he asks if you want your family to live. You know what I mean? Like right, if you live in right. that country and you know the way things work, like that's why I'm sure so many people over there are so scared. Oh, terrified. Because terrified. They, they, I mean, it's certain doom yeah. if they don't get out. Um, I listened to a podcast today with um, it had the guy that actually killed Osama bin Laden. Oh wow! And uh, you want to get into some get into some, some deep stuff and like military guys have a different kind of humor. Uh, I, I, guess I mean, you have it's to. just it's it's a dark dark humor. And and they use that to kind of cope with just the realities that they're exposed mm-hmm. to. And, and this guy was frank with what's happening right now and what will happen. Yeah. Um, and people that aided the Americans, you know, depending on the, you know, extent that they aided us, I mean, they're going to be skinned alive. I mean, they're and and if they really aided us, if they really bought into this whole democratic system that we were trying to set up their children are going to be skinned alive in front of them and then they're going to die. It is it is horrific what is happening. And, you know, I'm sure throughout this podcast, I'm going to say things that people disagree with because, you know, and I'll just say it now and we can talk about it later, but like, I believe we should have gotten out of Afghanistan. I think Biden made the right decision to pull out of Afghanistan. Mm, yeah. Now I'm going to explain what was wrong right. with how it was done and the fact that there's no future plan. Yeah. Um, but we shouldn't have been there. We should not have been there for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Now, from a positive note and to just give any veteran listening to this or any veteran that, you know, is just struggling right now, like, and I put something out the other day because I was pissed. Mm-hmm. I was just like over 3,000 people died in, in September 11th. And then you had over – so far over 6,000 Americans have oh died my goodness. in the Middle East. That's awful. In our war on terror. And I'm just like, what are we doing? Like if that's not enough evidence for you that our government doesn't have our best interests in mind, they they send our our men and women to die well, <laughs> for 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 things. And now, don't get me wrong. I know that our servicemen and women have chosen mm-hmm. this profession, and the profession is to go and fight. Yeah, and they did provide the Afghan people, the Iraqi people, twenty years of freedom. Mm-hmm. of safety, of um, real democratic values yeah. that, that you know, women going to school and just just so many, so many things. They really provided them with a good life for 20 years. Right. So I, I it, but it still just saddens me and, and kind of makes me angry. Well, I mean, I did, I disagree with you partly. I, with some things because I think why it's mostly upsetting is because I mean it is sad that those many that many like Amer- military Americans died but like what they provided for that country was amazing and what makes me upset is that now it's almost like those people died for no reason well that's what I'm saying because now it's just going back to the way it was but, before. But this is it. This is it. And this if, is if why. If we could have, if we could have, now, and I don't know how hard this would have been. You would have thought in 20 years that you could have done this, but yeah. I don't know because I don't know. But like if they would have from the very beginning said, okay, if this is what we want to do, they should have planned at the beginning. This is how we get out. Yeah. And so these are the steps that we are going to take during this 20 years or whatever, how long <laughs> right. to put this in place so that when we are ready to leave, it is 
but tactical and those- strategic and wise and that people will be safe and they'll have what yeah. they need to defend themselves. None of these things were put in place, though. And none of these things were thought through from the beginning. That's and that what, that's that what doesn't I've, make any sense to me. But I don't understand that. But it, how could you, how does anyone with even a little bit of a brain go in and start something that big and not think about the end? Because you're making money along the way. Yeah. So it's just straight up corruption then. Yeah. I mean, so there's then, a military industrial complex in this country with companies like Raytheon and and Boeing and just di- different ones that are making money by supplying the military industrial complex, by supplying missiles, by supplying planes, by supplying yeah. all of the material needed to be used in war. Yeah. And those companies get a lot of money and a lot of politicians that have been in our government work for those companies now. Yeah. So it's advantageous to continue a war for this long. I just- Monetarily. I, yeah. But, but what- so this is the thing. I completely agree that those lives, because there was no plan, because there was no resolve to finish what you start, those lives were wasted. Yeah. I would if I was the wife of one of the men that died over there and saw this happening now, I would be yeah. livid. I would be right. so oh my goodness. Well, yeah. I just yes, and we should. And we should. Did those men die in vain? No. No, because they did fight terrible people. They did kill people that were raping people in villages, not who belonged in those villages. They did kill terrorists. They did kill people that vowed death to America. Right. And death to their own people who opposed them. Yeah. You know, so they killed bad guys and they did their jobs. So their service should never be remembered in vain. Oh, no, no, not, of course not. But did the government send them over in vain? Possibly. Possibly. Because if you're not going to finish something, like, this is what I'm saying. I don't think that America should be a world builder. We don't have a great track track record with it. Mm. Mm -hmm. We don't. Right. You know, we, we did Vietnam. That was a complete mess a complete mess and we lost right and there's a lot of drug corruption in that war mm-hmm. um and then now we're in Afghanistan and we lost this is a loss yeah you know we didn't we didn't accomplish anything except for you those know, good years for those people those over good there. years but when you're starting to look at everything now, I mean, we just heard uh, like a month ago, Biden said like there's 300,000 Afghan troops to oppose the Taliban that were moving in. Mm-hmm. We didn't train them effectively. Right. He said we did, but we didn't because right. they just laid down their arms. Right. So there was, I, I know there was a lot of kind of backroom deals between the Afghan soldiers and the Taliban. Right. So like, there's those things going on, but also like we weren't really preparing this country to be self-sufficient. Yeah. We were there. I, I don't know. I don't know the ultimate purposes for what we were doing there and and why we remain there. But yeah, I, I just, I don't think that we should be world builders but if we're already if if we find yourself in that situation mm-hmm. and you already had started that you need to finish it yeah. Well, yeah and if that was communicated to the american people like hey i'm sorry that we got into this right we shouldn't be here we shouldn't have stayed here it should have been get osama bin laden get out yeah and but we got ourselves into this mess we were the the democrat democratic leaders of the world, you know, the leaders of democracy to the world, we thought we could offer this and they would just take it and eat it up. Yeah. And they didn't. Mm-hmm. Some did, like like you said, some did. And and my heart breaks for them. Yeah, it's but this country has always devolved back into where it's at right now. Mm-hmm. It did that in the 
you know, when the, the, who were the first people that tried to take over that? I forget like in ancient times, you know, ancient, oh, Alexander the Great tried to conquer Afghanistan and couldn't hold it. You know, you had, um, the Soviet Union tried to Mm -hmm. conquer Afghanistan, couldn't hold it. Yeah. You know, and then we came in. Yeah. Tried to conquer Afghanistan and couldn't hold it. Yeah. Because there's, what the thing about Afghanistan is it's tribal. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no nationalism. There's no like one nation of Afghanistan. Yeah. Like we labeled that on the map. Oh yeah, because I forgot after Alexander the Great, Britain. Britain tried to conquer Afghanistan and couldn't hold it. You know, and that's kind of where Afghanistan came to be. But there are a bunch of tribes. Right. And these tribes give their allegiances to powerful regimes like the Taliban. Mm -hmm. That's how it works in that country. They're never going to have this kind of government structure that has voting, that has all of these things. Mm -hmm. It's going to be this way. Right. And we should have learned from history. Yeah, yeah. We should have learned. Or just been more creative. If we were gonna yeah. if we were gonna do something about it, done it in a different way, maybe. Tried yeah. something new. We should have learned from history before we went in. But again, I'll come back to but we got ourselves in there. Mm-hmm. And a leader would say to the American people, gosh, man, I'm sorry that we got into this mess. We shouldn't have been here. Mm-hmm. And I would love to pull out as many troops as possible. I would love to give homes to, you know, a lot of the refugees that are going to need to come out that really helped us, that really right. aided us, that fought alongside of us. Um, and there are veterans and companies that have brought some of the Afghan uh, yeah. people that helped us, and they work now in the United States. Yeah. And that's so cool. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Because they they fought and died alongside of us right. over there. Um but like, hey guys, we're gonna have to be here another ten years. Yeah, yeah. Another twenty years. Yeah. I mean, you have countries around the world that play long games. China's playing long games on stuff, mm-hmm. and we don't play the long game. We play whatever is is advantageous to us now. Yeah. And yeah, it's just. It's really sad. It's not conducive to good leadership. It's not conducive to good results, as we're seeing in mm-hmm. the chaos. And, yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm at on the whole Afghanistan thing. We shouldn't have been there. I think it was inevitable that we were going to go in there because of the kind of emotional pitch mm-hmm. of where the country was at after 9-11. I don't think there was any way to stop that. But... Because we got in there and because of the way we got in there by really toppling the government that was there at that time, mm-hmm. we had to set something up. Yeah. We toppled their government, you yeah. know, what the, whatever government structure was in there at the time, it was gone yeah. in like a couple days. You know, it was great for our military, but like, okay, now you made the decision you didn't come in there and say, hey, we're just going to occupy you until we find Osama bin Laden and then we're going to get right, out. Right, right. We decided to come in there and topple their government. Okay, now you're a world builder. Yeah. A nation builder. Finish the job. Yeah. Do it right. Finish the job. It's just amazing because we rebuilt Europe after World War II. I, I forget what the, the price was. To rebuild Europe, there was fire bombings yeah, yeah. in cities across Europe. And we funded the rebuilding of that. And it's like a fraction of what we spent in the Middle East. Oh, wow. We've spent trillions wow. in the Middle East. But think about that. So we could rebuild Europe, but we couldn't accomplish a rebuilding of the government structure. Yeah. In the Middle East. Yeah. So that's either just a terrible job on our part of planning, um, funding correctly, whatever. Something broke down there. Or it can't happen in that region of the world. It just can't. Either way, either way, I just, yeah, it definitely, definitely bothers me. Like, I'm not, 
I'm not I'm not okay with the way things are rolling out, but no, I, I feel like they should have even it. Yeah, like you said, even if they realized along the way that this isn't going to work, they should have got the people out first. Like I just it, I it just I don't know. It seems like common sense to me. Like be like, hey, we're planning in the next six months to start slowly, you know, taking taking our hands off. Yeah. Like. Let's let's make a plan, okay? Americans, get out. Like it was a terrible decision. Uh, Afghan, there's, there's, Afghans that have helped us. Let's let. We're not going to make you leave your country, but we want you to know that we're going to be leaving in, right. in, at this time. We should we should have gotten out of Afghanistan because, again, I'm going to say this because we have we are not. I'm not even going to say have not. We are not. Our government has decided, and and the people, the American people, have decided that they don't want to be there. Well, even though that's now that people are seeing how it's unfolding, they're they're well, not so sure. It, but this is the confusion, though. It's because we did such a terrible job. Like the situation is chaos. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not whitewashing the statement of we shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. I don't think we should be there because we lost our resolve. Yeah. We lost our determination to finish the job. Yeah. So you shouldn't be there anymore because you're just going to waste lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. American people are going to die for nothing mm-hmm. because you're not resolved in what you're doing. Yeah. Don't waste, like, that's that should be a lesson for life. Mm-hmm. If someone's going to waste your time a friend, a family member, you know, and just suck the life out of you or put your life in danger, mm-hmm. get out. Yeah. Get out. But like, man, I, so yes, we should have gotten out, but man, we should have just talked to like a soldier about this. I don't know what our generals are doing. I mean, they seem like frauds. They seem like political kind of just pawns in this political game and they're not making military military decisions that make any sense. Right. Uh, like just just one point mm-hmm. just and then I'll I'll no, let, no, go let ahead. you go but just uh, this navy seal that I was talking about that that killed Osama bin Laden he's like yeah we all knew that winter is the time to do this. Mm. Cuz winter is the time that the Taliban don't fight. Right. The summer literally is called the fighting months or something something along those lines. Because during the summer is when the Taliban are out and about and they're ready yeah. for action. Mm-hmm. The winter, they're like, nope. Yeah. They just go back to their homes and, and they wait till it gets warm again. Yeah. yeah I, just little stuff like that. Wait till they're not active. Like yeah. I have to go kill a, a yellow jacket, like an underground yellow jacket nest. You have to wait till dawn or dusk. Right. Like, don't when they're wait. back in their their hives to kill them, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's a smart decision. Mm-hmm. And because it's a smart decision, that I means written on the directions. Yeah. And like all you would have to do is ask a soldier and be like, "Hey, when was the fighting the least? Yeah. Oh, in the winter time in Afghanistan." Everyone knows this, and yet we're pulling out in the middle of summer. Wow, I didn't realize that. It's just it's well, I didn't know that, but like a soldier, yeah, knows that stuff. That's sad. So, yeah, it's just like, I don't know what we were thinking. And, I mean, I don't know what our president is thinking. <laughs> I have no idea. I have it no seemed, idea. It does seem it does seem nefarious to me, yeah. honestly. I'm well, just, just like, the fact that, like, right now he's back in Delaware because he needed to, he wasn't sleeping well. Uh, this is what I've heard. That he wasn't sleeping well at the White House or at Camp David. So mm. he's back in Delaware for the rest of his vacation that he's taking right now. Mm. Yeah. And that's our leadership. <laughs> um, what were you going to say, though? You were going to say something. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't that important. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. But, yeah, it, it makes me sad. And I don't I don't really understand how how we could do such a bad job with that. And I I definitely do feel bad. I feel bad for the people there mostly. 
for the people there. Yeah. Um, for the women and the children who are going to be severely mistreated now, and especially for those who even even have some sort of tie to us. Just how awful that's going to be, and uh, that makes me makes me pretty mad. Um, yeah, and I feel I do feel bad for our American military too, because um, I'm sure. You know, when you're in, at least from what I hear, when you're in the military, you follow your orders, like you do what you're told. So I'm sure they kind of feel not great either. You know, they're being told what to do. Like, I guess if they know that this is a bad time to pull out, they're probably all thinking that. Like, why are we doing this now? Well, this is what we have to do because we're being told to do this. And that kind of stinks. That stinks for them. And, uh, it's just, it's yeah. sad too when like military people like that I follow on social media are basically laying out better battle plans than our commander in chief and our, yeah. you know, the person in charge of the military, the yeah. global military, our, our global military. Yeah. You know, and, and it's sad too because there are veterans who are literally like, get me a plane, let me go over there. I'll deal with the situation. I'll help get our people yeah, out. Yeah, And we're not doing anything. There are up to 40,000 Americans Yeah, over there. That's crazy. Well, they are like, sending... Well, this actually is just kind of stupid to me. Not that they're sending people over now. They, they, they took everyone out, at least from what... If I heard correctly. And now they're sending military back over to like to do certain things because of how bad it is. Yeah. And I'm just like... Really? Yeah. Like, could you thought of that before? <laughs> but no, what I think I was going to say before is with like the whole, uh, you know, like nation building, um, which yeah, I don't want to talk about this. I yeah. don't know that. I don't know too much about that, but I actually, I think I disagree with you on that. I think that because of our position in this world, at least as of now, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good thing that we do that sometimes. Not, I, I don't think we should do that always. But when, yeah. when like just horrific things are happening, I mean, I'm good. I'm good with stepping in and like helping. But if we're actually doing it with a genuine heart yeah. and we have a plan and we're mm -hmm. like, this is what, this is our mission. This is how we're going to, this is how we want it to end. And this is what we're going to do so that it ends the way we want, you know, so that when we leave this place, it just doesn't go back or worse, gets worse, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think there, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it does seem, it does seem like we don't actually do a very good job with that. Like we just waste money and time and, and we don't soldiers. have any leadership. We don't have any leadership. Yeah. And that's, I think that's where I kind of fall and have kind of moved towards this, not isolationist, because I still think we need to have our presence out in the world because you stop terrorism out in the world. You don't want it coming yeah. onto our soil and stop right, it there. Right. You want to go out into the world. And there are ways through special forces and different avenues like that to stop terrorism around the world before it comes onto mm -hmm. our soil. Um, so I'm not isolationist in that way, where we just pull everything out. No, um, that doesn't work. But at the same time, because of our failures, because of our consistent failures and lack of resolve mm -hmm. and lack of resolve with our, I really have an issue right now with our military generals. I mean, they're, they're, they're really, uh, they're making poor decisions. They're, they're playing with this, kind of woke ideologies, you mm. know, and they're bringing that for some reason, because it's advantageous politically, they're bringing that into the military and, and yeah, they're playing with fire. What? I don't understand the stuff. benefit of that. How is that beneficial to the military? <sighs> it's who's not supposed to, it's not, they're supposed to kill bad guys. and protect. No, like, they're supposed to kill bad guys. Yeah. Like that. Any military person would say, my job is to kill bad guys. My <laughs> so, job is not, to defend. My job is to kill people. Uh, right, right. That is the job of the military. Yeah. Boiled down. Mm -hmm. Sucks. And I'm so happy that they are doing it and not me. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I don't know if I could. Right. And so I applaud their bravery and their courage mm -hmm. and, you know, because 
it's the hardest job it, in the world. It's, it's yeah. Um, people are like, oh, teachers. Teachers have the hardest job in the world. No, try yeah. killing a person. Yeah. And going home and sleeping at night. Right. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. goodness gracious. Yeah, going back to normal um, life after that. Yeah. yeah. Our first responders, get off your high horse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> get off your high horse. And God. Um, anyways. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to think of those generals. And, and just a lot of that stuff has sort of shifted my focus away from kind of where you're at in, in being this, uh, having this ability to bring democracy mm-hmm. to other parts of the world. Cause we know it's the best. Mm-hmm. There's no question. No question. There's never been a greater nation than America. Yeah. For all its faults, for all its things and mistakes that it's, you know, things it's done wrong and mistakes, still the greatest. Yeah. Still the greatest. And, you know, there's an ethical, there's an ethical argument as to does that mean that you have the obligation to topple other governments of other nations? And to bring this better, definitely don't don't like governmental the term, system uh, topple. But, well, you're uh, going to have to destroy what's there in order to bring the new thing. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. And, and, and honestly, I, I don't know if that's always true. And honestly, in Afghanistan, you're going to literally like the Nazis in World War II. They were utterly destroyed. Mm. Utterly. Yeah. There was nothing left of them. Yeah. And then you were able to rebuild. Yeah. And even that took time because it was split in half. And then you had a communist section of Germany and you right. had a democratic section of Germany. Right. So even that was a difficult transition and took years before yeah. they became one Germany that had right. a democratic system. That's a good point. You know, so it's not an easy process. But first, you will have to come in and you will have to completely wipe out the governmental structure that's there, the regimes that control the people, you will have to completely wipe them out. Mm -hmm. You have to. If you're going to start a new thing, you have to erase what was there. And that's, you got to have some some gonads. Mm -hmm. You got to have some resolve. You got to have some determination and some knowledge that you are going to do this. Yeah, all the way. For knowledge that you are going to complete the mission. Right, right. Before you do it. And I just don't think we have that resolve. I don't think we have that ability well, you to really— definitely shouldn't go in if you don't have the resolve. No, and that's why I don't trust us to nation build. Yeah. And that's kind of what's shifted my focus away from that. Would I love for democracy to come into places like North Korea? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're darn tootin'. Yeah. I would love for Kim Jong-un to be dead. Mm-hmm. And for democracy to come to the people of North Korea who are starving. Yeah, yeah. In a heartbeat. Right. I'll go. If we were, if if, if there was like some call. Yeah. Or like some draft to say, who wants to go fight and, and topple North Korea? Be there in a heartbeat. Yeah. Be there in a heartbeat. I don't trust our government to finish the job though. Yeah, yeah. And well, I don't want to. Especially wanna, not now. I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste the lives of other right. Americans. Like, I just, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, I don't think we could. I don't think, yeah, I feel like maybe a few years, like when we first went into Afghanistan, I feel like it could have, it could have been, now I don't know if it could have been done there, but like, I feel like we did have the drive and we could have maybe done a better job. I think you're right. I think you're right. But yeah. nowadays with how divided our nation is, we can't decide on anything. So I definitely wouldn't think we could, should, or could do it now. Um, in a place that might need it. But, uh, but if we were united, like we, we used to be more united. Mm -hmm. We're a lot more divided now, which is not helping us. Well, 3000 people dying unites you real quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. We were divided before. I think it was hard for us as kids to really understand the division before. That's a good point. It it wasn't what it is today. No doubt. (laughs) But it was there. Yeah. And 3000 people dying we st- and I feel that like we stayed you. united for a little longer th- at that time. Yeah. I was interested. Now this is changing the subject a little bit, but it was interesting to me how like in 2020 when like 
the whole COVID thing started. Yeah. How like, I feel like not only our country, but like the world kind of just united for a little bit Mm -hmm. because they were like, this is scary. What's going on? We're all trying to figure it out. And it was like, we were like, nothing was that important anymore. (laughs) And then it wasn't. And how quickly that was like, it was like, I don't even know, three months or less than that, that it was all gone. Yeah. (laughs) And it was worse than before. And you're just like, what just happened? What just happened? But, uh, yeah, I've been thinking on that lately. I was like, that was weird. Yeah, that the, was weird. You had because the perfect we, storm. We were so like, yeah. we were so pulled together. Like, let's figure this out. Everyone's trying to figure it out, and then just like all mm-hmm. hell broke loose. Yeah, yeah. But it was the perfect storm. You had people locked down against their will for longer periods of time than the period that they were given that they would have to lock down. Mm-hmm. So you're already being lied to by the government. Then you have George Floyd dying. Yeah. Then you had, you know, so people are, have been locked up in their ha- homes for months now. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm going to get out and just, just to get out. Yeah. You know, and, and this gave them an opportunity to, to go out and protest. And they're like, okay, yeah, that, yeah. that works. Um, and you just, it was an election year. So you had, Tons of oh, divisive true, yeah. content coming out from both sides, mm-hmm. um, trying to divide you in order to gain your vote. Disgusting. So it was the perfect storm. Yeah. It was a perfect storm for the chaos that ensued in 2020. But um, yeah. Yeah. Well, d- just to go back to the nation building for a sec, I just want to, because I think this is something that a lot of people don't really. think through well. It's it's taken me a long time to kind of get to where I'm at with it because like we do have the strongest military. We do have democracy. We do have all of these things. America, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, it's a it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to to really dig out and say, if you have the ability, should you? And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm still, I have, you know, the opinion I voice, but it's hard. It's hard. Like I said, because things like North Korea are happening right now. Mm -hmm. There's a Holocaust going on in North Korea. Yeah. Like, people are starving in concentration camps, in prison camps, being um, slaughtered, raped, you know, sold into human trafficking on a daily basis, and we do nothing. Yeah. Because of China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a major factor, too. And that's another reason why I don't trust our government. Because for some reason, we decided to stay in the Middle East. What real things kept us there? Mm-hmm. Terrorism? Okay. I, I understand. Terrorism's real. Um, how many more terrorists did we create through this occupation, though? Mm. You don't know. Mm-mm. You don't know. How many drone strikes made a child into an... a a terrorist when he grew up I don't know I don't know but but the fact that there's like there's a war like a civil war in Ethiopia going on right now did you know that Mm -mm. of course not because it's not advantageous for us yeah there's no natural resources for us to gain there's no thing for us to gain through that war so we do nothing yeah and then so we know a holocaust is going on in North Korea we know that Uyghur Muslims are in concentration camps oh, in China. I was just about to ask. About, is that because of the Ethiopian thing? What, the Uyghur Muslims? Yeah. No. No. I mean, China's involvement may be there because they have their tentacles in Africa. Okay. Um, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just like, just the hypocrisy and the lies and just all of this stuff makes me like, oh, I can't trust you 
yeah. to bring democracy to the world. So let's just not do it. Yeah. Let's just not do it because you have proven yourself untrustworthy. Yeah. And a failure. I mean, you're a failure. And it sucks to say that about the United States, but like, we don't give, we're not given leaders. Yeah. Because we destroy people so hard when they come to run for office, mm -hmm. no one of value is running for office. Yeah. Only power, power hungry, you know, people. That's a really good point. Are going to be, you know, egomaniacs are going to be the only ones that we get. Mm -hmm. to run for office, and it sucks. It sucks. And it also has it has way too much pres prestige, I think. Sure. I, I feel like we talk about that a lot, but yeah, being, being a government official anymore is like, you get paid too much. You, have you get too, paid after you stop you, working. You have too much, too much glit and glamour, and mm -hmm. yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. It should be like, you really want to do this and you're it's almost like a a sacrifice right. to be in the government um yeah that's and why there I, shouldn't be no there should not like i i think that they definitely should be paid because they're like you can't do that and not be paid no, but like no. it shouldn't be to these large amounts that yeah yep i agree i agree and that's why i don't trust them yeah I don't trust them. When the government or government officials prove themselves trustworthy, maybe my opinions will change right. back to wanting to advocate for us to go into North right. Korea, wanting to advocate for us to free the Uyghurs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's an awful situation. I only know a little bit about that, but that's... We're that terrified of China. Terrified. And we won't touch North Korea... Because of China. Mm -hmm. Because China is the only thing, and we've talked about this before, I think, but like if China stopped funding North Korea, they'd be gone yeah. in a week. Yeah. Done. That's, government gone. Yeah. Because they can't sustain themselves. That's crazy. The government would starve. Yeah. But China provides Kim Jong un everything that he needs in order to keep up his regime. That's gross. It's it is gross. It is gross. And I don't know all the intentions of China with that. I, I don't know. Yeah, I know they're they're a buffer kind of between, um, you know, North Korea is kind of a buffer between China and Japan and China and the United States. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, know I they, like, they, they like a communist part of Korea, you know, to kind of combat South Korea there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't know, though. I don't know. Yeah. I don't understand the all like the major advantage. I know we've heard a little bit from that. Yeomi Ye Park. Is that how you say your name? Um, yeah. Yon Yon Me Park. Yon Me Park. But um, but that was only like a little a little bit like they benefit from like there's like human trafficking and, the, you know, there's more women to traffic to the uh China to China, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but like that's, I mean, and that's all, that's awful in itself. But I'm like, really? Is that, is that the main reason? Like, my goodness, like no, there's got to no. be more than that. No. But <laughs> once again, North Korea is the biggest producer of crystal meth. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah. They're the biggest global producer of crystal meth. So, wow. Yeah. So that could be part of it. So <laughs> they're they're fueling a lot of countries with drugs. My goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a crazy world out there. Yeah. It's a crazy world out there. And I, I guess to kind of wrap this up a little bit, count your blessings, man. Count your blessings because we live in such a free and prosperous country. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we've talk, talked a bunch about needing to fight and make sure that those freedoms aren't taken away and make sure those freedoms are maintained in our country and keep doing that. Keep doing that. But we, we need to count our blessings for what we do have right now. Um, 
and I just watch the videos of what's going on in Afghanistan, and I just am like, wow. <laughs> like, uh, I should never complain. Yeah. I should never complain. I'm not getting beaten in the streets for what I'm wearing or for who yeah. I associated with or whatever. Um, but even, I mean, now I'm unraveling what you just said, but like, to me, that's even more of a reason to like, yes, count my blessings for sure, but like, to be ready to fight for my freedoms. Well, because, yeah, I agree. Like, I don't want that to happen to me or my children or my children's children nope. in this country. Yeah, like, I, I, like I, I am, I'm like, yeah. This is you. the first country that has this much mm -hmm. freedom. Mm -hmm. The and only country. The only country. And the only country uh, that has ever existed with this much freedom. Yeah. And I, I won't, I won't give that up easily. Mm -mm. I, I think I definitely in the past two years have become a fighter <laughs> like, and not, not physically, but like, I'm going to stand for what I believe and yeah. for what is right because I care about people. Yeah. And if you don't like that, and then too bad. <laughs> and yeah, I'm ready to be wrong about some things in order to have that fight. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, if I feel like it is an attack on our freedom, I'm going to fight against it. Yeah. Maybe I'll be wrong down right. the road. Yeah. But for now, I'm going to fight. Right. Because it feels like an infringement. Yeah. It it feels like the government is infringing on my inalienable mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So I'm 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 in total agreement with you. But just when it comes to this, just. Look at your children, look at your spouse, look at your 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 life and just be grateful for what you got. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then take that gratitude and find a veteran yeah. and <laughs> dump all that gratitude on them. Right. Because they're the reason why you still have that freedom. Amen. Uh, and I think they'll always fight for that freedom if it ever comes to that within this country. Yeah. Uh, or from without, you know, that's that's their job. They are here to defend mm -hmm. the American people. Mm -hmm. uh, and even veterans that are out of military service, they're ready to defend the yeah. American people if it comes to that. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm hopeful in that way. Um, but please do that. Please find a veteran online or in person. Thank them. Let them know that you're praying for them. Let them know that you're thinking of them. Let them know that that you care about what they did and how they served. And despite what our government does, their service will be always recognized and as valuable yeah. and, and we will honor what they did. Mm -hmm. So I hope this uh, conversation was good for you guys. I, I hope that uh, agree or disagree, you got something from it. So that's our goal. Talk about stuff. Um, give our opinions. And that's really all we can offer. We're not going to offer you expertise in much. Um, but we have some knowledge and we have some things that we've thought through. So take it for what it is. And uh, always remember that we're just breathing. <laughs> And that's all this talking is. It's just breath coming out of our lungs and we're putting words behind it. But all right, guys, before you go, make sure that you uh, like this video. If you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Listeners, make sure you subscribe, follow. If there's a notification bell, hit that on that platform. We will see you on the next episode. Love you all. Goodbye.